some reason you're listening to Hypothetically. Enjoy. All right, Hypothetically, episode 26. Welcome back. We got a great guest, uh, Jamie Wolf. Thanks for joining us. Hey, what's good? Thanks for having me. Thanks. I ask the guest every time, do you want to say some mean stuff to Nathan? So you guys are, uh, have built a rapport. Yeah. Your, uh, your hometown sucks dick. Oh, not, well, uh, that was kind of mean to both of us. Let's yeah, see if you we wanna, can get it to be mm-hmm. more Nathan specific. Yeah. Nick's pretty I mean, sensitive. If you, you don't want to hurt him. Inspiration. You could look at his face. I mean, just yeah. look at it. You look like, you look like Nick, but, but, uh, but worse. Not, like oh. if you like, <laughs> Oh wow. If you, if you kind of microwaved Nick for a couple minutes and then. Took him oh, out. <laughs> that's a good, that's nice. <laughs> Is, you think it's is, appro- we invited you here? Do you think it's appropriate to just shit on us like wait, right on the onset? No, like, I think wait, he asked me to do that. <laughs> you didn't have to. It was a test, and you failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's been hypothetically episode twenty six. <laughs> our mean, mean guest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what if Jamie was the first person to ever do that? Actually, I think yeah. you might be the first person to just come out swinging. What? Yeah. No usually way. they like you're supposed to. It's like a dance. It's like the. Like when you pay a check, you know, you're supposed to like hesitate at first and then be like, I'm not going to do it. And then you slowly begrudgingly do it. But you just did it immediately. Yeah. I well, like it. Piece of shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, you show someone your naked ass. There is a 95% chance it will really cheer them up. But there's a 5% chance that it will just be like a normal ass to them. Do you, what, under what circumstances do you use this amazing ability? Oh, and- okay. Well, that's, I think it would be different if it was my dick, right? Like that feels like a worse crime. Um, yeah. But my ass, I'll show, I, w- I would probably walk around with my ass out if that were the case because 95 percent of people would be really cheered up and does it work in such a way that if i show more of my ass it makes them even more happy like if i spread my cheeks it's like it goes from like good like oh i had a good day to like that was amazing or is it i don't know you would have to do some experimenting there (laughs) to try it yeah you'd show someone your ass and they're like that's nice and then you'd show them your asshole and they're like oh oh, all right (laughs) well (laughs) <laughs> well, my good day just went from good to different. <laughs> what, what happens? So the, is it a 5% chance that people react the way they would react in this world? Right. Or is it a 5% chance that it ruins their life? No, well, not their life. Well, I guess I haven't seen your ass. Maybe it would ruin someone's <laughs> life. It would ru- <laughs> <laughs> to see your yeah, ass. I don't know. I think well, all you certainly this- haven't. <laughs> I think for me, all this would do is I would stop buying people birthday gifts. I'd be like, my ass every year you'd be like i am the gift yeah. and i remember this this happened to me in college i was walking down the hallway and there was this girl i didn't know crying just sitting on the floor crying i didn't know the context mm-hmm. you do you show them your ass because there's yeah, like a course what if it doesn't then you just this girl's crying and what if she's in the five percent and she's like why would you do this well so here's my question is it person specific the five percent chance it's I, a new dice roll for every person because oh, i was gonna so say someone could be like the other nine times you showed me your ass i really liked it but today i Get the fuck out of here. I was hoping it was person to person because you just get rid of it's probably genetic. You just get rid of that gene. Just do a little eugenic and then boom, bada bing. Now your ass is perfect and everybody loves it. Like an ass Hitler, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have people faking it. They're like, no, no, I love your ass. It's can I smell it? I love it. (laughs) I've shown so many people, dude. I can tell when they're faking it. I'm like, dude, you don't really like it. You're not making the right amount of eye contact. Ass like, yeah, contact. There's, yeah, there's not enough ass contact here. I know this is a ploy. Get him. And then three guys would grab him, put him in a van. There'd be no more him. It's a really good question for three guys, right? Because if, if if I were a, a woman, I'd be, no question I'd show everyone my ass all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. The 5% <laughs> would go down to 2.5%. Just half the population yeah. would go, awesome. They'd be like, Regardless fine. Of- yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having no chemical reaction like the other people seem to, but it's uh, still good. <laughs> <laughs> feel nice that you chose me to show that too. <laughs> um, if someone told you that, if they were like, I'm going to show you my ass, and there's a 95% chance it's going to make your day better. Do you? Oh, yeah. Them if you first? give them a warning, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> you have to just walk up and be like, get ready to smile. Ass time. But it's not that bad to see an ass by accident. Even, even a man's ass. Like, I'm not attracted to men, but it, it doesn't like get me down you know i don't get the, i don't see an ass and be like oh man you know? <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> shoot all right what if what if the effects only worked uh three foot proximity does this change the equation at all like you got to get in there oh yeah 
for sure. They got to sure. they got to feel the ass heat on their face. Wait, so is it yeah, the heat that's, that's making you like it? Is that's what the good part is now, or is it still the ass itself? It's still the ass, but it's just that's. I was just I was just painting a mental picture. Ass yeah, heat. and that in that case it would definitely change the calculus because then it's pretty much a crime if you do it yeah you know three feet you could you could trip and then your ass is right on their nose <laughs> okay what because, if it's seven feet but it's exactly seven feet like if you're even a few inches off you are going to disgust the person that sees i don't know because then you have to measure and they'd be like what are you doing if it's just a random person crying on the subway and i show them my ass and i'm six and a half away and now they're like crying and i showed them my ass plus like, like maybe that's why they were crying like people just keep showing me their ass and I, they won't stop and you're like yeah but it's different <laughs> and then it's not the right different distance <laughs> <laughs> so you're an anesthesiologist but instead of putting people under with whatever kind of gas they use you have to choke the person out you know you have to just choke them out like when you're a out to put them under how would you explain this process to your i guess victims i would still put the mask on their face like i was <laughs> gonna use the gas and then i would also have them close their eyes and be like okay the gas is coming and they're like it feels like you're choking me and i'm like no 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 that's the gas that's what it always feels like because my first thought was just to be like to say almost the same stuff like just count to 10 and then you'll be asleep and then i would start choking them and they would start fighting me and i'm like Dude, no, count to 10. You're not you're not supposed to fight me. You're just keep counting. Do yeah. other anesthesiologists do it the normal all, way? <laughs> yeah, you're the only one. <laughs> Is it just a, I don't believe in all those harsh chemicals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, trust me. This is organic. <laughs> These guns are organic. Am I allowed to also hit them? What if That's even after they even after they pass out? <laughs> once they're once they're passed out, they're yours, man. How would you explain it, Jamie? First of all, I wouldn't be the one to do it. I would never do that because it would feel weird coming from you, right? If you could enlist <laughs> someone else, I think they'd trust you more. If you could get like a nurse and then a, their primary care physician uh, and maybe even a third person, maybe a family member to explain to them that he's going to have to choke you out. <laughs> I think that would it would be more likely that they would accept it. But if I were the one like, I know this sounds crazy, but I have to choke you out for this <laughs> surgery. I'm not sure that they would be super thrilled with that. So I think if we all were in on it, they'd be like, it's unlikely that everyone at this hospital is in on one lie. I think explaining that to the parents would also be tough though. They'd be like, okay, you know, your son who has terminal cancer, unless we can treat this, well, I'm going to choke him with my thighs and you need to explain to him <laughs> why it's okay. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, if the choking fails, you also are given a big rock. Well, Only if I have the rock, I think I would just explain about the rock. <laughs> Which is I'd be like, look, one of two things is going to happen right now. We're fine performing on a cadaver. That's it's good practice for next time. <laughs> So you, well, you just keep counting and don't scream. <laughs> in, in, if there's a rock option, you're going to have to use a rock option just because it, you just want a one impact, bam, and then they're gone. They're out rather than like fighting with them. And, and maybe they hit you. Maybe they get the upper hand. Maybe they choke you out some of the time, you know? And then, the then you have to get the better. surgery performed on you. <laughs> That's the surgeon's then, code. Whoever's passed out gets yeah, the they're... surgery. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Hippocratic Oath is. Just we cut yeah. whoever doesn't resist. <laughs> How you become the anesthesiologist at this hospital is you yeah. fight the old It's a real king of the wins. hill, yeah. <laughs> the anesthesiologist is this just jacked dude. <laughs> <laughs> How did you become the anesthesiologist? Well, the trick is don't skip leg day. That's what I... <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to accidentally kill them with the rock. So I would knock them out by hitting them in the stomach with the rock. However many times that head. took, I would just keep hitting them in the stomach. Be like, go to sleep. <laughs> they just keep throwing up. I'm like, no, you're doing it wrong. Keep counting. Do we get to restrain them? Yeah, whatever you can do. <laughs> okay, great. So in that case, I would just lie from the beginning. I would go, unfortunately for the surgery, sometimes... In the past, people flailed with their arms and they actually caused a lot of harm to themselves and others. So we're going to have to strap you in on the gurney with handcuffs. What if when you explain that, they're like, I'm an anesthesiologist too. You just yell code red and then rock. <laughs> <laughs> code red is yeah, when there's another anesthesiologist. It happens yeah. so often there's a code. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're just like, you think you're the only one that brought a rock to this thing? And then they also pull out a rock. Oh, and that's man. Crazy. Yeah, and then you got to fight. <laughs> it's a bloodbath, dude. And then you fight, and then whoever loses gets the surgery, and mm. the other one becomes the anesthesiologist. Mm. But 
you know, that's just par for the course of this job. Like I've, you know, as the anesthesiologist at this hospital, I've really grown into my role and it's yeah. not ideal, but that's what you've been tasked to do in this life and you're going to do it well. So I'm going to take that rock and, and just smash them. I think the hardest part about this career is when you're between jobs, how many diseases you have to fake just so you can get into the fucking room so you can interview and kill the other anesthesiologist. It's really oh, tough. I'd like to think it's more like pro wrestling where you can just <laughs> kick open the door and they're like, oh, shit, a new challenger and just bash the anesthesiologist. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're doing two surgeries today, boys. <laughs> OK, <laughs> did we did we tackle that? Nathan, what would you wait? What was the question? Was there a question? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's how would you explain to people? I said I would just do the oh. count to 10 thing. And then, when oh, they started but then what if you're me, like would... new and you don't know how to you're like, all right, count to 3000. They're like, what? And you're just like, Shh, <laughs> just keep counting. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's that's why I thought of when I thought of the original question. That's why I added the rock thing. I was like, there needs to be an out for new people. Oh, I thought of this earlier today, cool. but just curious. What do you think is the highest number you've actually a sequentially thousand. counted to? You have counted to a thousand. Yeah. Wow. Fucking autistic. Why did you do that? <laughs> no, no, I was on a run and I was getting really bored and I was like, I guess I'll just see how high I can. I'll just try counting to a thousand. When you got to a thousand, did you smile? Were you like, no, yes. I was. <laughs> no, I just stopped running and walked home. I was pretty bummed out that i did that <laughs> i think i think once you get past 100 every number you count after that is less impressive and people think you're weirder for doing it well impressive is the wrong word because i don't even think counting to 100 itself is impressive but. no you're not like you're not like 98 and the crowd's like oh, 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 he's gonna go all the way impressive is like probably the, the hundreds and everyone's like i like the earlier seasons better <laughs> uh, who cares? I, I do have a question. When you counted to a thousand, how long did it take you? To, like I most long... of the run. Did you yeah. do Mississippi? Yeah. Run. No, no, no. I didn't count no. seconds. I That'd be counted amazing. one, two, Jesus, three, four. Man. If you said Mississippi yeah. a thousand times, <laughs> by the end, you don't even highest... know what it means. Who would you pick in a fight? The movie Home Alone or the original Lion King. So it's a kid with booby traps against lions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, no, it's not the kid. It's the movie itself. Yeah, I think traps. one thing that would be booby really traps. tough is like Simba would come in and they're like, oh, no, a lion. And then Simba starts talking <laughs> and then Simba starts singing and he sounds fucking awesome. And they're like, oh, we can't shoot this lion. He sings and he's pretty good. And then he just rips out their throat. He would get yeah, one after they realized he's a bad lion. I just want to clarify, though, that Simba's first kill after he sings is the kid. So all of the other people are like, oh, my God, they kill children. And Simba's like, yeah, I kill children. And then he so. goes back to singing like a Kuda Matata. <laughs> I think maybe the Home Alone team, if, it, if they just have to survive the siege, I think they could just close the door. I don't think lions have an answer to a closed door. They don't have doors. I think you could leave it unlocked and they'd be like, what, what is this? This isn't like think... any elephant graveyard I've seen. <laughs> isn't Donald Trump in Home Alone? He is. He's Apprentice Trump mm -hmm. against Simba. He fires Simba for not singing well enough, which hurts so, because so... that's what Simba thought he was good at. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think when they're slaughtering the people, they're going to be able to hit the notes, right? It sounds like it's a given for you that they win. Oh, no, yeah, not, yeah. I think they, they just they close the door. It. All the lions are like, well, maybe if we harmonize well enough, they'll open the door because we sound so good. But I, I don't think I don't think they would. I wonder how long if you'd never seen a door, how long would it take you to figure out how to get in one? Nathan, I think it would take you a long time. I think I would figure it out fairly quickly. But I agree. I, I, I agree. Babies don't open doors even when they see you do it. Oh, even I when like I tell the baby anymore. to open the door, I'm like open the door, baby. <laughs> It just sits there. <laughs> Baby, we got to go. We're late. <laughs> Be polite and open the door. <laughs> so, Nick, who do you think would win? I personally think Donald Trump could solo the whole Lion King universe. I was a big <laughs> Trump guy in 2016, and I think he could personally kill many lions. He's a very great man, and he had a lot of good ideas. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the question is really kind of a non-starter for me. <laughs> <laughs> Trump would go January 6th on those lines <laughs> and <laughs> steal their podium and stuff. Then they couldn't make speeches. I wonder if he could organize his supporters to murder lions. I feel like it'd be a fairly easy task. Oh, I feel like that'd be easy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These lions are rapists? These, yeah, they're mm -hmm. not sending their mm -hmm. best lions. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the manes on these lions coming over. They're so <laughs> shambly. <laughs> and some, I assume are good people. Just what would think, you do? I think it would be a absolute slaughter fest. Home Alone would wreck the lions. They'd 
they'd, they'd have all these lion traps. And, you know, McCulley, he, he's got a lot of good qualities that would, would aid him well in, in a full on war. Yeah, but and play this yeah. out. Let's say the humans start eviscerating the lions. Remember, the lions can sing. So the songs get sadder and sadder and they're singing like, you know, slave songs. It's like it's really fucked up and you start to feel bad. Can yeah, you keep slaughtering true. lions when they're singing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot? <laughs> <laughs> they're all sitting up there with their booby traps like guys are we on the right side of this like (laughs) how is history gonna look at this what if you had to cry every single day before you could go to sleep because you got to figure out how to get yourself there every day how would that change over time well it's weird that it's a hypothetical um (laughs) i can tell you i can tell you what i do (laughs) please (laughs) well you just you have demons and they 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 won't let up so they just come at you every night rest and when when's the best time for demons to get in your head right before bed and then you sob and then you tire yourself out from sobbing and you fall asleep it's quite a simple process, actually, and and um, I think Nathan, if you if you have the next question, we could move on. <laughs> you are a farmer, okay? Are you actually doing are the next really? question? <laughs> moving on, moving on. That was a good. You are a farmer, and you go on vacation, and when you come back, all your farm animals are doing kind of an animal farm situation. The pigs have established a crony communism kind of thing, and you're so fucking tired of them. What do you do about it? How do you deal with these fucking pigs and? They're fucking communist. Before we get into this, I just want to say I'm going to make the last one a clip and everyone's going to reach out to Jamie and be like, hey, man, I saw the podcast. <laughs> everything all right? I mean, it's cool that you went on that touching podcast to talk about that. I hope everything's OK. <laughs> so wait, it's I have a farm and the animals keep animal farming. Just when you guys go on vacation, whenever you leave, they're like, what if we just work for each other? Oh, I mean, I feel like you're every- expecting me to take the violent route and just kill the pigs. Like every time I get back, I'm like, oh, I guess we're having bacon again. But I wouldn't. I would buy all of my animals. Animals, a copy of Ayn Rand, and I would really get them on this sort of individualist <laughs> kick. You know, it's about rational self-interest. That's what I would get my pigs into. I'd be like, oh, here's the trough. They'd be like, no, we each prefer our own separate meals, please. We don't like sharing in any capacity. I, I would have very selfish pigs. In a similar vein, Nick, I think a good solution would be to read them Animal Farm because it doesn't end well for the animals in the in Animal Farm. And if I explain that to them and I go, this is this has happened before, you're repeating history, I think yeah, maybe they could see reason. I feel like we would restart reading Animal Farm. You would get to the part where they kill the humans on the farm. And they're like, wait, we could do that? I would skip pigs. that part. And then you they tried to kill out, the humans and then the humans killed them and fucked all their pig wives. And they'd be like, Jesus, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'd be like, is this an allegory for the Russian revolution? I'm like, no, this is an allegory for what I'm going to do to your wife. <laughs> and they're like, all right, God, never mind. <laughs> Um, also, on my farm, pigs have wives. So, <laughs> that's... yeah, my on my farm, the same thing is true. Yeah. but they're also Mormon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I feel like that's a bigger problem than the than the uh, than the communism thing. Yeah, we do we do pig weddings on my farm, and <laughs> people keep reporting it, but there's technically nothing illegal about. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a legal document. You're just marrying pigs. Fun, like in your backyard and it's just fun if i'm being totally other. honest though i just marry my pigs for the gram yeah uh, <laughs> i marry them and show. i take pictures with filters <laughs> and it's awesome somebody's That's big like day you. and it's my pig <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good point i bet you there are pig weddings on instagram with like pigs cutting the cake <laughs> and there's like little pig figurines on top in pig you tuxedos know. Yeah, you know, like in the wedding when they both shove the uh, cake into each other's face and it's all messy, you know, there'd be a pig version of that, but it'd be really messy and it would get a million likes. And then uh, and then and then New York Comedy Club would have to pass me. <laughs> I just get really personal. Well, one thing, the animal farm, they keep fucking writing on the silo. You know, they keep yeah. writing like all animals are as soon as any wrote on my fucking silo, I would lose it. You know, they'd be like all animals are equal. Be, who, who wrote that? <laughs> and then they would try to be well, all communist and be like, we all wrote it. And I'd be like, I'm killing all of you. And then they would sell out whoever wrote it and I would eat them. Yeah, you actually wouldn't assume it was the animals, Nick. I, I, I posit that you would assume it was it was vegan activists. Saying all yeah, animals I are equal. It's true, implying yeah. humans and animals are, are the same. And then honestly, that's very bad. That ideology would, would creep its way into your animals and they would they would believe that. And you'd have to assert power over your animal. As we said, 
you'd have to fuck the, the pig wife. Fuck. Then the pigs are like, it was an arranged marriage. I don't even care that much. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I fucked this pig for no reason. <laughs> At least I enjoyed myself immensely. I would find the good. Married... No, if it was if it was vegans or vegetarians making a statement, I would my statement still stands. I would find them and I would eat them in front of my the vegans. Pigs. Yeah, I would eat them in front of my pigs. In front of your pit. Okay, interesting. I, I think ultimately the that the solution would have to be psychological it couldn't be physical because you need the you need the pigs and the cows you need the milk and you know you need them you need chickens to produce eggs as you said ayn rand is good you bring in a speaker maybe maybe you get a, a ben shapiro who's very convincing and you know has has, has <laughs> logically sound arguments and you, you hold kind of you hold kind of the the sort of things they do on college campuses where he destroys. Yeah. Ben Shapiro pigs. versus pigs. <laughs> the pigs like the pigs like and Ben Shapiro is like, uh, it's called the Boy Scouts <laughs> and fucking crushes these pigs. Uh, it's in the name Boy Scouts. <laughs> you could get him with like one of those signs. What's that sign? The like the change my mind thing. Like, that would be amazing. Okay. If there was a Steven Crowder, it was like change my mind. Pigs should not unionize. <laughs> <laughs> Just pigs who weren't quite ready to have the conversation. <laughs> you know, like they're trying their best, but he's like, well, did you look into it? They're like, no, I didn't know you were coming today. It's horses with blue hair. He's like, do you have a figure for that? Do you have a figure for that? Where, where did you get, where did you do your research? Okay, well, mine's coming from the University of Toronto. <laughs> Nathan, did you answer? Oh, oh, I would, I feel like I wouldn't. Why did you say, oh, some... like you didn't know we were going to ask you? <laughs> oh, me? Oh, you know, you go, oh, you guys were just so into your thing. I thought you wouldn't get to me. I think you just got to look back at what they did in history. I think you just start funding another farm's space program and you kind of get your farm and their farm into kind of a Cold War situation. You will have to put money towards a farm space program and that's going to be expensive. And you just do that until your farm goes bankrupt. You can just overthrow them. Wait, so is my farm the USSR? Yeah. But then I'm... Yeah. I'm America? No, no, the other farm's America. Who am I? You're a farmer. I'm confused with you. I said it in the question. <laughs> oh, what right. are you not getting about this? Okay. Yeah, you the metaphor stops at me, okay? That's what Do you I think if do. there was a pig space mission, they'd make a lot of bacon jokes? Like whenever it got dicey, they're like, oh man, our bacon's cooked. It could be a lot of that. Houston's just dying laughing. They're like, God damn it, these astronauts are funny. I think so mm. one person in the control room says it, and then the, the head guy says, hey man, we said we weren't going to make that joke, and then he gets fired. They just nip that in the butt of me. No, 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 we're not doing bacon. <laughs> Stuff yeah. for, for the morale. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I was just kidding. Out. Get out. <laughs> no, no breakfast-based puns. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We no. no.